Well guys, tonight's the night. It's a night we shoot in OSC with the Ascar 103mm APO refractor. And this is my fifth video on the Ascar 103. I have a unboxing video. I also have a video on the 1X field flattener, a video on the 0.8X reducer flattener, and also a video on the 0.6X reducer flattener. And I'll put those videos down in the description below just in case you missed it. So be sure to check those out. Now, we only have a few hours of clear skies. It's just a big hole that's coming in between 8 and 11. And honestly, we weren't supposed to have tonight. It's just one of those things where I kind of saw it on Astrospheric and I was like, hey, let's go test this thing. And honestly, from my last test, when I shot the Great Orion Nebula, I was really curious about the 0.8X and also the 1X field flattener with vignetting because I used a CLS filter and I got quite a bit of it when I shot the Orion Nebula. So I myself am wondering what it's gonna look like with those two accessories shooting in broadband. Also, quite a few of you reached out and said, hey, can you shoot in one shot color for me? Just so I can see what you get for the star performance. So I was like, yeah, sure, totally. And honestly, I've been kind of itching to shoot OSC for a minute. I haven't shot OSC since I got into the hobby. I pretty much got into mono right out of the gate. But there was a short amount of time where I shot with a one-shot one shot color camera. And that was my good old Nikon D3200. Now, this little guy is Astro Modified. And I did the naked sensor mod on it and because of that i'll be using a two inch zwo uv ir cut filter because it'll cut down on the star bloating in the infrared spectrum but since this is an aps-c sensor we'll be able to see how much vignetting we're going to get from each of the accessories the more important thing is is seeing how the blue light is focused with the red green on all the stars. So far we've seen really good star performance in mono, but in mono I'm able to focus with each filter. But what happens when you have a sensor that captures RGB? How does the red, green, and blue line up in the stars? Well, we're about to find out tonight. Now I think the D3200 is going to be a really good camera to shoot with because a lot of beginners are starting the hobby off with DSLRs and also you OSC Astro, Astro Cam users will find this helpful too since this is basically the sensors that we use it's just uncooled. Now the only thing about it since it is an uncooled sensor is I'll probably be running into some walking noise and probably dust bunnies on my sensor because I haven't touched this camera for quite some time. So I'll probably be needing to take some calibration frames. So I'll be doing that. So I'll be doing some flats, I'll be doing some dark flats, and I'll be shooting some darks tonight. And speaking of tonight, what are we shooting? Well, I think we'll be shooting the Triangulum Galaxy because it's still up and in a nice spot in the sky. I'll be shooting with a 20% phased moon tonight, but it is kind of setting in the west and away from the east, so I should be getting a lot of darker skies there. And since I'll just be shooting with basically a UVI or cut filter, I'll need the, as much dark skies as possible. I'll probably be choking up to 1600 in ISO, Usually this camera likes it in about 800, but I'm gonna see if I can, you know, get a little bit more sensitivity out of this sensor by going up to 1600. I'm fully expecting noise, so I'm prepared to deal with it. And also I think doing two minute subs is going to be on the menu tonight. And because of the limited time I'm gonna have, I'll probably only be able to get about 30 minutes of exposure time 
in each of my accessories. So I'll probably do 30 minutes with my 1x field flattener and also 30 minutes with my 0.8x reducer flattener. Now, we're probably going to not get a super epic photo tonight, but that should be enough data to see how much A, vignetting we're going to get, and B, what the star color is going to look like. So, let's get on out there. All right, we are out here. I'm rolling already, actually. And getting data on the triangulum. Whew! Surprise, surprise night. I'm also contending with a 20% moon. I don't know if you can see that right over there. But I don't think it's doing anything to my subframes. So I'm going to capture 30 minutes in my 1x field flattener, which right now I'm doing. And then we'll switch to the 0.8x reducer flattener after that. But I'm liking the data already besides a whole bunch of dust bunnies on my sensor. It's actually looking pretty good. I must say the data that I'm getting right now is pretty nice. Check this out. Here is my subs and please excuse my dust bunnies. Oh my God. I didn't clean my sensor before I got out here. I probably should have. But I'm just going to take flats tonight. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but check that out. Look at the stars here. Nice and tight. And it really does look like, at least right now, the scope does a good job of merging the red, green, and blue light. So I'm not really seeing any fringing. And also... There's not a lot of vignetting either on the 1X field flattener. All these dark parts right here, to me that looks like, you know, the common sensor modeling from my D3200. But once I get it on my computer, I'll probably be able to see it a little bit better. Just got my 0.8X reducer installed and I decided on the Pleiades because it is slowly becoming a foggy night so I am concentrating my efforts on something really bright I'm shooting through a small layer of dew right now I'm hoping it's gonna clear up because it looks like it is but at least I'm out shooting right and I'm taking calibration fl frames tonight evidently <laughs> here's what it's looking like straight out of the camera right now and as you can see, I'm getting tons of reflection data right now, and the stars are really tight still. There's a lot of blue in this field, and I think it's, it's doing a pretty good job for sure. Here's kind of the glow around some of the larger stars, but that's to be expected. I think it's pretty minimal, the, f the fringing so far. Again, we'll see what happens when we take a look at it on the computer. Check it out. It did actually clear up. And I'm shooting my darks right now. And we definitely got enough data on both accessories. So we will stack this data in the morning and see what it looks like. But not bad for a night that we weren't supposed to even have. So, amazing. All right. See you in the morning. Before we get into the data, guys, and see how well our Nikon D3200 did, <laughs> I've got someone who wants to say hi to y'all. So, let me go grab him. Look guys, it's Taco. Or it was. He's, you know what? He's getting used to being up here actually. I'm trying to get him used to it up here. Just so he can visit more often. See, he's so shy. 
Why are you so shy, buddy? It's also a really nice day, too, so he's kind of looking outside a lot. I mean, the sky is really blue. Considering what happened last night, it's a pretty nice day. Sorry. Sorry, guys. <laughs> you know, for someone really shy, you have no shame. You know what? I'm just going to leave him up here and just see what happens. So let's get into the data. This is my 1x field flattener on the triangulum. And what we're looking for is how well the telescope focuses the red, green, and blue light. So we were trying to look for maybe like half blue, half green stars, or half red, half green, half red, half blue stars, some type of aberration like that. And how centered uh, that we're gonna get some halos, because we're expecting halos because we're shooting at bright stars. And that's totally normal for OSC cameras and also mono cameras. You're gonna get some type of haloing in there. And here it is. M33, and let's zoom in to about, I don't know, let's, let's go into 400%. Right, Taco? 400%. <laughs> He's in the camera. You were really distracting. Maybe I shouldn't have left you up here and you got hair all over your face, buddy. All right, where were we? Oh yeah, 400, we're in 400% and we're gonna look at some stars here. And we are seeing a nice star glow that we've already determined that this scope produces. Man, my, my desk is shaking so hard. All right, he jumped down. <laughs> As I was saying, we've already determined that this telescope does produce really nice star glow. And that's what we're seeing here. But I don't see any... Do you hear that? He's... I think he's eating right now. This is what I get for me wanting him to be part of the channel, right? I deserve this crunchy. <laughs> As I was saying again, we are cropped in to about 400% right now. And this is a good star to take a look at. Uh, it looks like all the colors are merged together pretty well. I am noticing a little bit of fringing in this star here because it looks like there is a tiny bit of blue, but it's very controlled. Like you would have to look really hard to see it. And that's what the 1X field flattener. Let's check out the 0.8X reducer flattener. And if you remember, I shot M45 or the Pleiades. And here is 30 minutes on the Pleiades. Jeez, this is actually a lot of data for 30 minutes, right? And all the stars are blue here. So since all the stars are blue, of course we're gonna see some blue halos here, but how are those halos placed? Let's take a look. Again, we are cropped into 400%. And those blue halos are very well centered. I mean, they're looking really, really good. Wow. At least we're seeing how well the design of the refractor is where it is putting the blue light. And to keep things in perspective here, I did shoot a few frames of the triangulum, since that's what I started with. So let's take a look at that. And this is seven frames at two minutes a piece. And we're starting to see a little bit of fringing here, right? But barely, because it's just in these pixels here. I'm at 
800% right now just to detect that. And if we move in a little bit closer, yeah, you definitely can kind of see it here in the pixels. But it's still very well centered. Let's check these, these stars over here. Yeah, maybe a slight blue fringing we didn't see with the 1X field flattener. But in my opinion, guys, the Ascar 103 is correcting for aberrations really, really well. And for the price, this is a really good value. It seems like you OSC shooters are going to have a really good time with this telescope. It appears that the refractor does a really good job of putting the red, green, and blue light in the same place, minimizing fringing. It's not 100% fringe free, but I think at the price point, it does a really good job. And one other thing to note is it was really easy to put a two inch filter into these accessories, especially when I was swapping out accessories because it uses the same part. So this part right here, this little spacer is exactly the same on each of the flattener and flattener reducers, making it really easy to change out during the night. Hopefully you found this helpful, and I think the last video in this series is going to be a wrap-up video. I'm just gonna review what we went over and what I think about the scope and if it might be a good buy for you. Well, I mean, not good buy, but you know, like a good buy. This is goodbye. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.